I'm a 22-year-old woman employed by a non-profit organization, where I also volunteer alongside a couple, a woman in her 20s and a man in his 30s. Unfortunately, their behavior has begun to unsettle me, bordering on alarming. I joined this organization straight out of college less than a year ago, taking on the role of event coordinator. Our nonprofit hosts a significant fundraising event spanning the summer into fall to secure funding, thus requiring a substantial volunteer force for smooth operations. Until recently, I've enjoyed positive relationships with all volunteers without any issues. Upon starting my role, I was introduced to Ryan, a dedicated volunteer in his 30s. Initially, I felt a bit uneasy around him but dismissed it as nothing significant, appreciating his assistance with the intricate details of our fundraising event. However, certain occurrences have raised red flags. 1. About a month into the event, Ryan began frequenting my office unannounced. After briefly visiting my boss, whom he's apparently acquainted with, he'd linger in my office despite my polite attempts to excuse myself due to work commitments. Instead of respecting my boundaries, Ryan would unpack his belongings and remain seated, often for hours at a stretch, directly facing me. Even if I left momentarily, he'd still be there upon my return, making it incredibly uncomfortable for me to address the situation or concentrate on my tasks. 2. Ryan has a girlfriend, let's call her Mandy, 20s female. Prior to dating Ryan, Mandy strictly dated women and still prefers women, from what Ryan has told me. According to Ryan, he met Mandy at his university, and she began studying abroad in Asia at the beginning of the year. Mandy returned from Asia midsummer and began joining Ryan and volunteering for my organization's event. So far, she's been a nice girl, but she creeps me out like Ryan does. I constantly catch her checking me out, and she will touch my hands, shoulders, and back constantly. Now, I don't have a problem with her checking me out, but it bothers me when I'm touched. I've told her this before and nicely asked her to stop, but English is not her first language, and she is not the best English speaker. I've relayed this concern to Ryan multiple times, and he said, oh yeah, I talked to her about it, but I don't think she understood. I'll talk to her again. I don't buy that, since she seems to understand everything else I tell her. 3. The thing that really scares me about Ryan and Mandy is that they follow me everywhere I go at this event. When they aren't actually volunteering at the event, they follow me, and Ryan encourages it. They literally shadow me everywhere, holding hands together like the two twin girls in The Shining. This behavior is now starting to continue after dark when we're breaking everything down. I'm trying to avoid being alone with them at night, but it's getting harder and harder to avoid. 4. Okay, so here's the actual part. I heard through a gossipy volunteer that Ryan and Mandy wanted a threesome with me. I brushed it off at first because the volunteer I heard it from is a very gossipy person and has been known to cause drama. But one week later, my good friend Sarah, 20s female, who is very credible, was at the event and told me that Ryan admitted to her while he was helping set up her equipment that he had the hots for me and that he and Mandy wanted it to happen soon. Sarah also told me that I needed to watch my back with Ryan and Mandy and never be alone with them. Needless to say, I became much more concerned since hearing about that because Sarah never says things like this, and neither Ryan nor Mandy had ever brought this topic up to me. Lastly, I have talked to my superior about their behavior bothering me. After this all happened, he just brushed it off and said it was nothing to be worried about. I disagree, but I left the meeting with him feeling embarrassed, holding back tears of frustration, and doubting my instincts. Their behavior is setting off blaring alarms in the back of my mind, and I'm doing everything in my power to keep a distance from them, but I feel helpless. What should I do? Am I overreacting? What would you do if you were in my shoes and it won? I would like to extend a huge thank you to everyone who's given me advice or support. You guys made me tear up from all of your support, encouragement, and wonderful advice. I don't feel so alone with this problem anymore, and I thank you all for taking the time to read what I wrote and to give me the help I wanted so badly. On another note, I'm heading to bed soon and will answer any other posts, questions, and comments tomorrow. I will also add a few facts that keep popping up in the questions. My organization has no HR department, it's a small office, my boss is the head of my office and there is no one above him. My boss is also the volunteer recruiter slash manager slash boss, not me. I do logistics, and I am technically not in charge of the volunteers we have. My interaction with the majority of our volunteers is minimal. Yes, I'm in the EU. Edit, I tried responding to as many people as I could and will answer any more questions slash comments later today. Bulletin, my boss is not in today, and I don't know where he is. 
I haven't heard a peep. I have drafted an email to send to him regarding the meeting we had for your advice. Thank you again Reddit. I will also be sure to post an update about any further developments. Also adding another important fact, Ryan and my boss are friends. I know I said this in my original post, but I think a lot of people are missing this fact for some reason. Sorry, guys. I should have bolded it again. I'll post any other clarifications that I can without revealing my identity. I don't want to get fired. Thanks, God. Update asterisk first thing I did was send a follow-up email to my boss regarding the Ryan and Mandy situation, and I called the president of my organization's board who will call Dan to discuss the problem with him. Following my call, Dan had me meet with him in person as soon as I was able to so I could tell him everything that was going on. When I finished explaining the situation in detail to him, Dan looked absolutely furious and demanded to know what, if anything, my boss had done to rectify the issue of Ryan and Mandy. I explained to him that my boss had done nothing to stop their harassment and downplayed my fear of the situation, likely because of the close relationship between my boss and Ryan. In closing of our meeting, Dan told me to document any further harassment and lack of action on my boss's part and to alert him as soon as it happens. A few days later, I had a follow-up meeting with my boss regarding Ryan and Mandy's harassment. While my boss seemed to listen to my concerns this time, he also kept the meeting brief and promised action, although he would not specify what that action pertained to. The next day, I was cc'd on an email that my boss sent to Ryan about a phone call he'd placed to him, highlighting a few points such as don't close the door to volunteer throw's office and don't say x phrases to volunteer throw. I honestly couldn't believe my boss didn't cut Ryan and Mandy from our volunteer team and felt frustrated all over again. I forwarded the email to Dan. The day following the email, I came into work to find a teddy bear on my desk with no indication of where it came from, no note card, etc. Thinking Ryan had been in my office, I asked one of the office assistants, and he said that my boss had put it there and Ryan had not been in the office that day. I asked my boss why he put the bear on my desk, and he flat out denied it, even when I told him that one of my coworkers had seen him put it there. I was very puzzled and sent an email to Dan about the situation. The next day, I ran into Ryan outside of my office while walking with my boss, and he made a remark about wanting to sleep with me in front of my boss. So what does my boss do? He laughs. He laughs and agrees with Ryan. He gives Ryan a high five right in front of me. My boss apparently fantasized about getting me in bed just like Ryan did. That made me so angry that I felt my jaw lock up and my hands clenched like a bear trap. I didn't have any time to confront either Ryan or my boss about their behavior right then because we were meeting with a client, but I immediately called Dan following the client meeting and left him a voicemail on his cell phone about the incident. Dan calls me back to ask me about the full story, and I tell him everything. He asked me to email him the situation in great detail and promised me he'd be in contact with me before I went back to work on Monday. Skipping ahead to early Monday morning, I'm up and preparing for work when Dan rings me up with a quick message, I've got his green light to take the afternoon off. Naturally, I'm thrilled to comply. But things take an even better turn later on when Dan calls again, this time instructing me to extend my break for the entire Monday and to show up at his establishment the following morning instead of my usual office. Without hesitation, I agree. True to the plan, Tuesday morning finds me at Dan's office, bright and early as usual. He leads me into a conference room where I find myself face to face with six other individuals, all board members of my organization. Dan wastes no time in explaining that an emergency meeting was called in response to my emails detailing the uncomfortable situations involving Ryan and my boss making inappropriate advances towards me. The outcome? Unanimous agreement to terminate Ryan's contract effective immediately and expel him from the organization. In a display of solidarity, Dan and the board members express their sincerest apologies for what I've had to endure and inform me that both Ryan and Mandy have been officially banned from future volunteering with the organization. While details about my boss's dismissal remain scant, it's clear he didn't make things easy. Yet, I find myself indifferent, my troubles at the organization are now a thing of the past. On a brighter note, I've bid farewell to my old workplace. Amidst the turmoil, I managed to secure, interview for, and accept my dream job in another state. I've since relocated, and I couldn't be more content with the turn my life has taken. Gratitude abounds.